This is a short video on how to create an incident ticket in ServiceNow. Hopefully you've already seen the video on using a, a template to create an incident in ServiceNow. In this video I'm going to be going into a little more detail if you're filling out a ticket manually. So again to create an incident ticket I'm going to go over into my left navigation to the incident category and because I've got Service Desk Analyst in this uh, instance of ServiceNow, I can click on Create New. And I'll go ahead and minimize my left nav and my banner so I've got a little more room. Now in this case, I'm going to have a caller calling about a problem with Moodle. It's an instructor who is having problems um, granting access to one of their students. And um, I'm also going to say that in this case, as a service desk analyst, I'm not able to resolve the issue. So I'm also going to escalate this ticket up to Tier 2 support. So of course, the first thing I want to do is type in the caller information. I'm going to go ahead and type in the Internet ID. This field that takes the caller would also allow me to put in a name. So I could put in Jeffrey, for instance, and you can see that as I start to fill it in, I get a listing of all the Jeffs in the system, and so I could choose someone from that list. If I've got someone calling who doesn't have an internet ID, perhaps a student parent, or someone who hasn't applied yet, or someone from University Physicians, we do have an unknown caller and you can see that we even have a quick way to look that unknown caller up. It's ITSM1234. Whenever you use the internet ID or any of these aliases, you can just type that in and hit tab and it will populate. So you don't need to wait for the drop down menu. So in this case I've got my caller and I can hit tab and there's my caller getting completely filled in. I'm going to go ahead and pop on down to the contact callback number field. You can see that the system hasn't given a business phone for Bill and um, so in that case I want to check with Bill what the best number to reach him at is. Of course I should probably check this with all my callers to make sure I've got correct information. So Bill's giving me a great phone number to call him back at. There's also a field for guest email address. Uh, perhaps Bill would prefer to be contacted by guest email. Or um, if I'm using that unknown field where we don't have any information about the caller, um, I can put information in here. Service offering. Bill was calling about Moodle, so I can pop that in. Service offering is similar to the caller field. As I type, it's going to start giving me the list. Um, sometimes service offerings are not obvious what should go in here. Uh, for many of the service offerings we do have several um, aliases. So for instance if Bill were calling about Gmail, I might look up Gmail. You can see that the official service offering term is Google Mail, but typing in Gmail will also get this service offering to come up. If you can't find a service offering, if you're confused about the listing, do contact your manager and they'll uh, be able to find out what it should be. So I'll pop modal in there. The configuration item field is used for phone numbers and jack numbers. So I'm going to leave that blank in this situation. Okay, these next few items. Type. We've got three basic types and that's because we get calls on the helpline or people walking into the text top who don't have um, an actual incident. So we've got assistance inquiry which is where people are asking for directions or they might need technical help but maybe they just want um, you know they want to know how to do something. Assistance is when excuse me incident is when someone has an actual incident something is not working and service request someone might be requesting a new phone or something to that effect. So this is actually an incident and I'm going to put it in the category of applications. Subcategory is only used by one group on campus, so if you're not currently using that, then you could ignore the subcategory field. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pop in a short description here. 
and I'm going to say Moodle student and I'll put in there x.500 can't access site. Once you have a short description in here you might want to take a look to the right there is a book and if you click on the book it does take you to the ServiceNow knowledge base. Now I'm in the test environment so there's only fake knowledge base articles in here but this is a wonderful resource. Uh, we have the knowledge articles that are in here are growing um, quite quickly and I recommend checking it on any ticket that you're unsure um, that you can't resolve yourself because you might find the answer in here or you might find a knowledge base article that tells you how you should fill out the ticket so that the next tier support has all the information that they need in the ticket in order to handle the, the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the knowledge base. A few more required fields on the right. I've got assignment group. Now I've already determined I can't solve this issue so I need to put in an assignment group. If I was going to solve this issue I could put in my own assignment group which is service desk. So that would leave it um, in my own and I'm an OIT service desk. That would leave it in my own assignment group um, and uh, and that would be great if I was resolving it myself. But since I have to escalate this, I'm going to go over to the service offering field here, the Moodle service offering, and mouse over the information field. And here I can see what all the information about Moodle that we have in the system is. So you can see that there's a tier one and a tier two and a tier three support. Now I can't move off of that little window without losing it. So I'm going to mouse back over it again and I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and that allows me to glue or lock this window and there I can take a look at the tier 2 support is OIT application support and I'll just close out of that window and that means that up here in the assignment group I will type in OIT application support. There we go. Now this isn't an automatic thing because sometimes when we have the service offering of Moodle, the service desk analyst might resolve the situation. So then the assignment group, of course, should stay service desk. Sometimes I might pass something on to tier two, but then they might have to pass it on to tier three. So that's why there's not um, a hard and fast tie between the service offering and the assignment group. I don't want to fill out assign two because that's going to be up to this, the assignment group to decide who in their group is dealing with this ticket. But I do have these other required fields, impact, urgency, and priority. These are required fields. For impact, I have, impact is completely based on the number of users. And in this case, I have an instructor calling about a student. I could count that as two users. I might count it as one. But in any case, either way, it's going to go under low. Urgency has to do with what, what the, um, is not working and, um, or what can't be done because of this incident. So um, we have definitions for urgency, and they can be quite useful when trying to figure out what urgency to assign something and to call up those definitions you just need to put your mouse on top of the urgency field. This is kind of small to read on the screen so I'll tell you that in this case the urgency I'm going to assign is medium which means that a single user can't complete a job function and in this case the student can't complete the job function of accessing their course site so something always to remember is that students jobs are getting their schoolwork done here on campus so that that counts as their job. Contact type, I'll put walk in for this one. Okay, looks like I have completed the required fields, but there are two very important fields left comments for the customer and work notes. Now, when I save this ticket, a couple things are going to happen. The ticket is going to show up in the OIT application support assignment group, so that's good. It is also going to send an email to the user, to the caller, Bill Clocky. That email is going to include the incident number and it's also going to include the short description. 
I can also include a personalized message to that user by filling in the comments for the customer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in this case. I'm going to say, Bill, I have sent your ticket to Moodle support. You should hear from them shortly. And of course, I want to use lovely proper English, not use any strange tech terms and so forth when communicating with the customer. And then under work notes, I'm going to put in all the technical information that tier two would want to know. So any details um, about all of the troubleshooting that I've done and so forth, I would include in the work notes. Okay. I'm just going to take a quick note of the incident number here because I'm going to look up this ticket again. So I'm just going to copy that. And then since I'm passing this on to tier two, I'll go ahead and hit save and go. ServiceNow automatically up, opens up a new blank ticket for me. I don't want to look at that. I just want to take a look at the ticket that I just opened. And so I'm going to go back to my left navigation pane. And I'll take a look at all of the tickets. The reason I'm going to be doing that is because the open and the open and assigned are going to be looking at my assignment group. And you'll remember I put this in a different assignment group. So I'm going to go ahead and click on all. And here's my listing of incidents, several things listed in here. What I'm going to do is up here in the go to, I'm going to pop in that number and do a quick search and there's the ticket. Okay. Now there are many other ways to find tickets in lists and some of those are detailed in some other videos, but I'm going to go ahead and click on the ticket number. And the thing I wanted to point out, I'll close out of my left nav again, is that the comments for the customer and the work notes now are blank. That's because these fields are dynamic and the history of what has been sent before is listed below. Okay. Now in the test environment, this doesn't actually send out emails. In the production environment, I'd actually get to see the copy of the email that was sent out but I can also see the, you can see the technical notes that are included as well. So that's where those comments for the customer in the past and the work notes in the past go. If I were the technical support specialist working on this ticket and I wanted to communicate with the customer, I could always add more comments to the customer and save the ticket. And that would generate a new email for the customer. It only, the system will only generate those emails if I add comments for the customer and then at two points in the ticket lifecycle and that's when the ticket is opened and when the ticket is resolved. Okay, that's it for this video on creating incident tickets.